can't soak through. Still, I must complain. Fresh water is, after all, a vital ingredient in the art of making Scotch whisky. Aqua vita, or in Gaelic, Yushkabea. Another vital ingredient is barley, which is steeped in water and brought here to the malting house to germinate. The malt man turns the barley, allowing it to breathe and sprout. Can you no smell that? That, my friends, is the sweet smell of malted barley being dried here in the kiln. More specifically, it's the smell of burning peat. Now, peat is a young form of coal and another factor in determining a whiskey's unique final flavor. Ooh, is it just me? Oh, it's yourself. I was just having a wee breather. A bit like the malt here in the malt store, you might say. It's, um, waiting. It's biding its time, building up its strength a wee bit. Well, that's it. Onwards and upwards. Well, downwards anyway. <laughs> This is the mash tun, a container where we mix together the purest Scottish water with our grist from the mill. The sugar in the mixture is dissolved, producing a sweet liquid known as wort. The wort is then cooled, ready for the next stage. The residue left in the mash tun can be used to make animal feed. The wort might not look that special, but let me assure you, this will become pure liquid gold. So what, I hear you ask, is the one magical ingredient which helps turn a malty, sugary wort into something with, well, let's say, a wee bit more of a kick to it? Well, the answer is right here. This is yeast. of this microscopic and explosive living organism simply cannot be underestimated. Amazing! A human maelstrom of heat and foam. And if the whole thing threatens to get out of hand and overspill, you're in switcher blades above. Or keep the whole thing in check. And don't be taking too deep a breath in here, by the way. The vapors produced can clear pack a punch. The alcohol content at this point is still too low and needs to be increased. We do this during distillation. Now, pay attention. The liquid is heated in a pot still, and because alcohol boils at a lower temperature, it separates from the water. The vapor rises up the neck and is cooled and condensed back into a liquid by a copper coil immersed in cold water known as... the worm. 
Here we see the cooling and condensing process in action. The liquid is now known as low wine. But it needs to be distilled again to further increase its alcohol content. And that takes place here, in the spirit still. Each distillery has its own unique shape of copper pot still. Another factor in ensuring that each distillery produces its own unique flavour of scotch whisky. By now, the liquid is so strong, it has to be kept under lock and key by customs and excise. Here in the spirit safe, the still man weaves his magic by judging precisely when to send the first part of the run, or four shots, and the last part of the run, or faint, back to be distilled again. Meanwhile, the middle cut, or heart of the run, is sent to the spirit receiver. But it's still not Scotch whiskey. Oh no, not for a long while yet. These casks won't see the light of day for at least three years. Some not for 12 or even 50 years. During this period of maturation, a whiskey's unique final flavour is further enhanced by the wood of the cask that it's stored in. Its clear colour changed to a golden hue. What was once nothing more than barley and water magically matures into scotch whiskey. Ah, the sweet smell of evaporating whiskey. Up to 2% each year just disappears. The angel's share, they call it. Ah well, I'm away to join the angels myself. Slanjava. Please wait for your car to stop before disembarking the ride.